Hello friends, my name is Carrie and this is Tiger Lily Designs. Welcome to my sewing studio. Today I'm going to be sharing with you different project bags I have as a stitcher and a quilter and a lover of all the things I have made, I don't even know, maybe we'll count during this video, different kinds of project bags. And so I thought it would be super fun just to show you guys I'm not going to show you my full collection. That's bonkers. But I am going to show you different styles. I don't just have one style because I like to make new things and kind of reinvent and, and you'll hear a little bit more about it. But I thought it'd be fun to show you guys the different styles. It's not all one and the same. And maybe this will inspire you to either make a new style or find a new style or just fun little stitchy fun. So let's start off with the classic. Um, vinyl front. So who doesn't love a vinyl front bag? A, you can see through it, which is great. Um, I do quilting on the back of mine to give it some stability. Sometimes I fill it with foam. So it stands up all by itself and it will fit, won't fit on the shelf, but it would stand up on a shelf by itself. Or um, I use just double sometimes triple of the batting just to give it stability. But then it has a vinyl front and it's a zipper pocket. Now this is an extra large variety. Um, this is like, I think 15 by 15. It can hold a big old project. Like this is a four pattern project. And this piece of fabric, I think is a full yard. Um, and then I'll pull all my floss and all the things and I can see, and I know exactly what pattern this is. This is the abecedarian. I think I said it right. Um, with the needle and thread schoolhouse series. Anyway, vinyl front, super popular, super fun because you can see through and see what you got. So your collection, you're not trying to guess like what's in that bag. I don't know. So that's always a good size. Now, whether you want the big ones because you're a Q snap and you want to be able to fit it. I don't, I'm a stitch in hand. I like the jumbo ones for multiple projects. Um, not necessarily a Q snap, but uh, you could also make them different, whatever size you want. I do not have a tutorial for vinyl fronts. There's so many out there. I didn't, there wasn't a need. I had nothing new to add. So I did not make one. Um, moving right along is just a standard zippered bag. So it is a closed bag. Now, what, what's a little different with me and my Tiger Lily twist on it is I like to put vintage stitching on mine. Now, this, of course, is not a plain one. This is a patchwork one. Um, let's go ahead and... So I do have a tutorial for my easy breezy grid patchwork. Doesn't have to be rainbow. It can be this. Um, you can patchwork whatever you want. But what is great, see how the points, do you see how the points are perfectly points and they're matching? That's because I have a super crazy easy way. Sorry, I'm whispering, but I'm so excited to share with you how you can get those perfect grid points. And you don't have to sit there at the sewing machine and line them up one, two, three, for hours. You want to check it out. There's a video link down below that'll take you right to that. That, I do have a video tutorial to show you. So this is one, no edging. This is a self-lined. I think in that video, I go through the whole thing and show you guys how to sew a project bag that is fully lined, no exposed seams on the inside. You close it up at the bottom. Again, you can do this. You got a sewing machine. The zipper is probably the hardest part. Um, learning how to sew on a zipper, I'll be honest, is, you know, it takes a little time. But once you get it, you got it. You can do it. Um, and so I also do that style with the vintage stitching. This is just my... Um, you know, this was, this used to be a table linen in its first life. And now it's a project bag. And I don't know. I, the problem, I don't know what's in either one of these. Pulled them out of my whip basket right now because this was a story to tell. I, I, maybe I need some kind of fancy tag. Don't know. But that's one style. Then you move on to another kind of um, upcycled texture work. And I love this one. This one, I don't think I've showed it yet. I just finished it a couple days ago. So this is not vintage stitching, but you know what that is? Now, if you're new here, I have a sweet daughter. Her name is Lily, Tiger Lily. Um, her name is Lily. She's 17. So she hasn't worn this in 15 years or so. But you know, so Jim, she was a Jimbery girl. I don't know if, if you've got... Anyway, you know, the cute little appliques and so the rhinestone. So I loved getting her graphic tee outfits and it had a cute little like um, 
bubble skirt the way with it and but this was just a graphic from her tea i don't know why i saved it uh it, it, it's we called her lily bug so this one was extra special so i saved this one but what i did i was like you know what that's been sitting somewhere in my storage i keep a lot of things just just in case but i upcycled it and so i put some interfacing on it and then i just grabbed went to my scrap bucket and got some super cute you know reds and blues and greens and just did a log cabin around and around and around until i came to be the size i want this is about 11 by 13 but you can use anything you want in the center to be the feature it doesn't necessarily have to be stitching it doesn't necessarily have to be it can be anything that is special to you and that's what this is so i love this bag this one is different than you see this one has a quilt binding edge so this one is finished non-binding it's kind of folded within itself if you're not a sewer that won't mean anything to you but you understand this is a quilt binding this is the binding is the edge that you put along a quilt blanket kind of closing everything up it's the final step so this is just a vinyl binding style fully lined inside but you can, so I just want to inspire you to, if you have something special, graphic tee, an applique, something that is just, turn it into a project bag. Staying with the quilting motif for just a second here in Valentine's Day and the binding edge, I went and I grabbed a Riley Blake that you can use quilt blocks. And you'll see some great ones too. So quilt blocks are super fun. You don't necessarily want to make a whole quilt or a blanket or a table runner or whatever, but maybe just make a couple of the blocks, add it to a project bag. And now I have a perfect, adorable Valentine's themed project bag ready to go. What's in it? Again, I don't know. Oh, it's a love pattern by Hello from Ms. Matthews. But super cute. And I just want to show you that you can do that. Now this one... I won't say these are my favorites, but I like this one a lot. Um, this one was something I did during Scrappy September here in 2021. So I will link these videos down below. During Scrappy September, I was using scraps. It was all about, you, you know, scrap busting. And so it was kind of merging scrap busting and um, quilt blocks as project bags. So... I will link the video. I'm not going to go into it, but what you can do and what I show you and I give you a free pattern to download on my website is how you can make using that super adorable, great patchwork trick I showed you with that rainbow one, make this strawberry block. <gasps> how cute is that? Or you can make a pumpkin block or a watermelon block. So you can see they're all different shapes and sizes as we all are in the world. Everything doesn't have to be the same. Some have two projects, some have those small ones, some have big ones. I don't know, but they're all fantastic. And you can make them. So I think I have a whole fruit series. There's, I don't even know. I don't remember, I did it so much, so long ago, I don't remember. I just know that those are the three bags that I actually finished. I think I have all the blocks done, so I should put the rest together, but I haven't yet. So one more thing in reusing and upcycling things in your home are sweaters. Now behind me, you see a wall of fabric, right? Love fabric. I'm a quilter, have been for 20 years. Um, quilting and fabric and colors are my jam, but I also upcycle sweaters. Now I've made, I make sweaters. You thrift them. There's a hole in the sleeve. Throw it away. No, no, no. It can, it can live a new best life as so many different things. So I have pillows as sweaters. I have gnomes. Uh, or I, I upcycle my sweaters into pillows, into gnomes. And I will picture some of those things here so you can see um, all the things I try to do to upcycle in sweaters and give them new life. Scarves, all, so many things um, over the years I have tried. But now since I am like knee deep in the jump in the deep end of the pool for the project bags, I was like, but why can a project bag be... Yes, it can. So these are totally new. They don't even have projects in them. They just came off the machine this week. So this, I will put a picture right here and show you what this was first. This was one of those sweet, I'm sure it was a little girl's sweater. 
with the penguins holding hands. I mean, how adorable. And of course, it's done in the same method I used during that rainbow patchwork um, tutorial, project bag tutorial. I will link down below. But you can see it's just easy breezy. It's interfacing. You have to interface the sweaters because of the stretch on the sweaters. It will not be your friend. But if you use the right interfacing to stabilize your sweaters, you can have one of those fun, funky, anything, anything. So exciting. Look how cute. I, I don't have a penguin pattern. Maybe I needed to get one. And then this one, this was a thick sweater. This was one of those chunky wool. I almost thought it was going to be too thick, but really it's perfect. It just doesn't need any batting or foam stabilizer because it's thick enough. <gasps> Do you see? I will put a link what it was before, you know, in its previous life. It was a, a sweater. There was a hole in the sleeve. It was a moth attacked hole in the sleeve. But now, sorry, there's a thread. Like I said, just came off the machine. Now it's a beautiful, I'm not going to call it patriotic theme, but red, white, and blue. Love it. And of course, I did put patriotic on the inside. Um, sweater bag. <gasps> Love it. And again, not the same size. Totally different. I just let it become what it's going to become. So I do sell project bags and project keepers on the 15th of every month. I will link my website down below. Um, set an alarm. Set, I, I, I release it on the 15th of every month at 1 p.m. Usually it's project keepers. I will be adding sweater bags. It's kind of like just whatever I decided was fun to sew with that month. That's how Tiger, that's how I roll here at Tiger Lily. It's just like, what's speaking to me? I'll zig and I'll zag. So April's collection will be totally different from June, from October. Who knows? A, because I'm using thrifted materials. Vintage stitching, it's one of a kind. So speaking of vintage stitching, you know, these are my project keepers. What's a project keeper? A project keeper is not a bag. It's no, well, there are zippers, but there's no zipper on the outside. It's kind of like the trapper keeper of the 90s. 80s, if you're an 80s baby, 70s, 70s baby, but you ha lived during the ages of Trapper Keeper. So it's Trapper Keeper inspired, but it's called a Project Keeper. And don't, there's two different styles of Project Keepers. Project Keepers are either 24 slots for bobbinated DMC or however, whatever else you want to bobbinate. And then a zippered portfolio on the left side, zippered vinyl front. So you can totally see. And then behind it, I'm not going to show you, but that's where the pattern is. And so that is Project Keeper Style 1. And sometimes it's vintage stitching. Sometimes it's just beautiful tulip pink fabric. Or I have this one. Yes. So this one, like I said, vintage stitching. So these are one and done. Um, they just, because I'm upcycling, this was a vintage stitching little, one of those table linens that maybe your grandmother made a hundred years ago, 80 years ago, 20 years ago. I don't know, but she stitched it and it took her about 35 years to stitch all those things. And it's on a table linen that has been under your bed in storage for 15 years. I've got some of those. Um, I'm giving them new life and I'm super excited about it. So that's why the collections are always Totally unique, totally different. You have no idea what's coming on the 15th, but this is a project keeper with the vintage stitching. It's coming out on April 15th, but this is the other style. So if you don't bobbinate, don't worry. You can get the double zip side. So we've got vinyl on both sides and pockets. So lots of patterns. This could hold multiple patterns. Um, you know, you could keep one project on this side, multiple projects. Um, or if it's a big old project, you could put the fabric, you know, fold it up nice, stitching folded on the inside, as we all know the rules, and you put the pattern behind here, and then you can put your floss on the floss tags, keep it all nice and pretty on the inside of this pocket. Options are endless. And so that is one of those things. And so lastly, the one thing that I also like to do, you never know, like I said, what's going to come. This is a project keeper I've had, and I use, it's kind of like quilts. Plus this vintage lace. This is what spoke to me. Is this vintage lace needed to live its new best life and I needed to enjoy it. And then, sorry about that. Um, then on, um, on sometimes on the, uh, this is vintage jewelry. It's just one of those funkly necklaces that costume jewelry and nobody, yeah. But I was like, oh, that, that's a cute little bling bling for the pocket. Sometimes I do that. And this is a big, there's an example this is anniversaries of the heart. So this is one of those project monster projects. You know, I don't know. There's three or four patterns back here. Um, three or four patterns back here. All, 
so much fancy floss I don't even know and then of course the gigantic anniversaries of the hearts fabric and the stitching I think I'm only two months in but that is what I've got I just wanted to share with you guys the different project bags that I have in my collection that I love to sew I love to share hopefully I've enabled you maybe you're gonna go and stitch and find something fabulous that needs to become a project bag make it unique make it your own it's so much fun I have so many video tutorials to show you how to make a quilt block, how to make that fruit block, how to make the perfect patchwork. You can do it and I wanna help. So thanks so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, I would love for you to give it a like and I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and come along this stitching and sewing journey. It's gonna be fun. Happy stitching, happy sewing friends.